right into the war. Monuments, man. Well, it's certainly the biggest art heist ever. I mean, there's no question about it. There's never been anything like it. Well, it was a crime of the highest order, and it had to be answered to, it had to be stopped, because light has to triumph. Looks like we're gonna be together, buddy. We're called Monuments Men because we got sent by President Roosevelt to protect historical landmarks during the war, and also to literally get stolen art back. It was authorized by Roosevelt and Eisenhower. And Eisenhower. And, Eisenhower. Yeah. and the character that George plays in the film sort of spearheaded the whole thing. We put a team together and do our best to protect buildings, bridges, and art before the Nazis destroy everything. They're not superheroes. They're not G.I. Joes, some of them aren't even soldiers. Um, they're just people that are bright and intelligent who share this passion. George said basically every officer and every soldier that we meet on the road are all fit young men, and we're just this bunch of fat old guys <laughs> who don't know how to hold a gun. So you want to go into a war zone with some architects and artists and tell our boys what they can and cannot blow up. That's right. What they were were men that were far beyond the age that they were going to be drafted into the war and were given this adventure because they actually had this belief that culture can be destroyed. You destroy an entire generation of people's culture. It's as if they never existed. All of those things that we take for granted that are in the great museums of the world, a lot of them were returned by men who were sort of asked to do an impossible job. It's your responsibility now. When Hitler did this, it's not just about sort of a specific piece of art, it's about the idea of the culture and destroying it. Monuments Man Radio is about to go live. It's both historical movie about saving our cultural legacy and a feel-good movie for all audiences. The ensemble's just off the charts. I said early on to George, just, uh, I'm just going to smell the roses because this, this is as good as it gets. Frank, we got to go! George's take on the tone of it is essential to the accessibility of the story because I think you could easily make this story very sort of leaden and serious. But his take on it is that it's the Guns of Navarone, it's his band of brothers who've been brought together. I think you, you warm to these characters very quickly. I seem to have stepped on a landmine. Why did you do something like that? What do you got? Lieutenant here seems to have found himself on top of an unexploded mine. Why would you do that? You love us spending too much time together. I think what we're doing is honoring, in my case, my father, and some grandfather, but our, our parents' generation, uh, by doing this, by the, the incredible struggle that those people had but for the Depression and then a war. And they did the right thing, and they did it constantly, and they did it well. And they did it for the right reason. I've never shot at anyone before. I'm moved by the quiet heroism of it. It reminds me of the people of that time who didn't speak of their heroism. It reminds me that the act itself is its own reward. You don't get a ticker tape parade. He really wanted it all. And we better get it back.